In the late 1800s, Thomas Otto and his family moved into a mansion on the corner of Aiton and Simonton Streets in Key West, Florida. This is now known as the Artist House. The Ottos were known to be especially stern with their servants, sometimes even mistreating them. Now, it was such mistreatment of one Haitian servant that provides a twist in the story. This woman was hired to take care of their son Robert, but one day Miss Otto supposedly witnessed her practicing black magic in the backyard and simply fired her. Before she left, the woman gave Robert a little lifelike doll which stood three feet tall and had buttons for eyes and human hair, believed to be Robert's, and was filled with straw. Dolls that resembled children were not exactly unheard of during this time, but this one proved to be special. Robert named the doll after himself and often dressed him in his own clothing. Robert the doll became his trustworthy companion and he took it upon himself to take him on shopping trips into town. The doll had a seat at the dinner table where Robert would sneak bites of food when his parents weren't exactly looking. Robert would even be tucked into the bed with the boy at night. Soon, this innocent relationship took on a rather strange nature. Soon after, Robert chose to be referred to by his middle name, Jean. After being scolded by his mother, he told her that Robert was the doll's name and not his. Jean was often heard in his toy room having conversations with Robert. Jean would say something in a childish manner, and responses could be heard in a much, much, much lower voice. Sometimes Jean would become very agitated, and this worried the servants along with his mother. She would, on occasion, burst in to find her son cowering in the corner while Robert just sat perched in a chair or on a bed, glaring at him. But, <laughs> like most horror stories, this was only the beginning. Household objects would be found thrown across the room, G's toys would turn up mutilated, and giggling could be heard whenever these unnatural acts took place. Jean always said, Robert did it. The boy took punishment, but always insisted the blame that it was Robert. As the mischief grew, more and more servants took their leave, as new ones were hired. The Otto's relatives felt that it was simply time to do something, with the recommendation of his great aunt. Jean's parents removed Robert from their care and placed him in a box in the attic, and this is where he resided for many years. After the death of his father, Jean was willed his boyhood home. He decided to live in the Victorian mansion with his new wife. Jean had become an artist and felt that the house was spacious and would provide a place for him to paint. He went to the attic and dusted off his childhood toy, and he became attached to the doll despite his wife's displeasure. Jean would take the doll along with him everywhere he went. And he even sat in his favorite little chair while Jean and his wife slept nearby. The turret room became Robert's domain, and Miss Otto moved him back into the attic. Their marriage slowly and, you know, misconceptuously became sour until Miss Otto supposedly went mentally insane and died of unknown reasons. And Jean soon followed. Robert supposedly attacked people, sometimes even locking them in the attic. People who passed by claimed to hear evil laughter coming from the turret room. For some time, Robert even remained at the empty house by himself, until New Family purchased the mansion and simply restored it. The doll was once again moved to the attic. This pleased it as much as it did the last time. The doll was often found throughout the house. On one certain night, Robert even was found at the foot of the owner's bed giggling with a kitchen knife in hand, as you'll hear so often in these stories. This was enough to send them fleeing from their home. Robert was later moved to East Monterello Museum in Key West, where he sits perched in a glass box. Despite his new living quarters, the doll is believed to have given up on his menacing ways. Visitors and employees claim to have seen the doll move, and his spot, his smile, has been known to turn into a scowl. 
One employee even cleaned Robert and turned off all the lights and left for the night, just to see that the next day, he returned to find the lights turned on, and Robert sitting in a completely different position than he was in the night before, and a fresh layer of dust on his shoes. Some say he'll even curse you. If you want to take a picture of him, you must ask politely and courteously. He'll tilt his head in permission. However, if he doesn't, and you take a picture anyways, a curse will befall upon you, and anyone who accompanied you to the museum. The same thing will happen if you make fun of him. To this day, Robert remains at the East Martorello Museum in his cute little sailor suit, clutching his stuffed lion, continuing his menacing ways. <laughs> Have fun, and I would like to quickly point out that the events in this story are true, and that this story is actually true. You may go look it up yourself. And with that, I say, have fun.